All right, we're gonna kick it up a little notch. This next example was sine. So as you can see, we have uh, y is equal to negative sine of x divided by two plus pi four. So now we have an a, a b, and a c. A is negative one, b is the tricky one, it's actually one half, and c is pi four. So we're gonna have a lot of effects to our graph right now. So to find our amplitude, we're gonna take the absolute value of a, which is our leading coefficient, or the coefficient of our trig function. To find your period, you're going to take 2 pi and divide it by b. Uh, b, like we talked about, is actually going to be 1 half. Well, we don't like to divide by a fraction. What we do instead is multiply by the reciprocal. So we get 4 pi. So basically, this is a horizontal stretch. So it's made my graph twice as long as it normally would be. So kind of keep that in mind uh, as we look at our x-axis. For our phase shift, we're always going to start at 0 is less than or equal to what we're taking the trig function of and it's less than or equal to 2 pi and then what we're going to do is we're going to solve for x. I'm going to subtract pi force so I get negative pi force is less than or equal to pi halves which is less than or equal to uh, here's one of the hard parts about doing trig is we actually need to get a we have to add and subtract fractions. This will be 2 pi minus pi force. So that's 4 force. Take one away and you're at 3 pi force. I knew you guys had that in you, didn't you? Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and multiply by 2 to solve for x. So I'm going to multiply each part by 2. I can't be selective in what I multiply by 2. So I'll get negative pi halves here. It's less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to, uh, looks like, 3 pi halves. Okay, so that's our phase shift. So that'll tell us where our graph is going to start and where our graph is going to end. Next, we're going to find our divisions. And we're going to find our divisions by taking our period, 4 pi, and dividing by 4. And we'll get pi. Now we're going to look at how to graph it. Okay, uh, to be able to graph this, what we're going to do is we're going to start at negative pi halves, just because that's what they told us to start at, negative pi halves. Our divisions is pi, so we're going to add pi each time. So uh, if you're at negative pi halves, when you add that pi to it, you'll be at pi halves. Add pi to it again, and you'll be at 3 pi halves. Yeah, 3 pi halves. Well, I may have done something wrong. Let me go back and look. Do, 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 do. Oh, I did do something wrong. Let me go back and change that. Sorry about that. Uh, that's only one pi. It was two pi that I was trying to subtract from. So uh, this would be eight, um, eight fours. So it's going to be seven pi fours, which will make that down there at the bottom. Seven pi halves. Sorry. So why there are a lot of good checks here in our problem because uh, if I the period was four pi, I didn't think about it when I looked at the end. But when I was starting to count with my divisions, I ended up getting to 3 pi halves right here, which uh, was way too early, because I'd only added it twice. So add it again, and you'll be at 5. Well, let me make that a little bit further. So moral of the story, make sure that you're uh, getting this stuff and make sure that it's making sense in terms of how things relate to each other. So now I've added my divisions four times. One, two, three, four. There are five things labeled on my x-axis, so now what we're going to do is we'll go back and make sure the distance between these two should be two or four pi. Well, in terms of halves, that's eight halves, so hopefully it works out. Now, uh, going back and looking, our sine, we're graphing negative sine. So negative sine is always going to start at zero, and then we'll go to a minimum value. The minimum value is going to be based on your a, so it's actually going to be negative one. Now if you notice, I'm not using 0 as an x value because we didn't hit it. So it went to negative pi halves and pi halves. So we never hit 0. So don't, don't try to graph something on 0, uh, an x value of 0. And this goes 0, your maximum value, and then back to 0. So our graph, now my graphs are not, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> my graphs are not drawn to scale. So if you look at this graph compared to maybe the last one we did, they look pretty similar to each other, but as you can see, the x-axis is labeled differently. Plus, what you should know about our graph is this graph is 4 pi in terms of its length, 
where this one was 2 pi. So in theory, it's actually twice as long, so kind of keep that in mind.